Hello everyone, welcome back to Knock Knock. Okay, at the end of the last episode, when I finished the game for the first time, I mentioned that I didn't feel like I had a very good grasp on the story, and also that I was pretty sure there were other endings and other things that you could do within the game. Well, in this episode, I'm going to explore both. I have done something different. Let me explain that right now, actually. The, uh, okay, the reality fragments that I think I've mentioned before. Uh, the reality fragments are those videos that play in, I think, in two cases. One case they play is when you find the girl in the woods. Th there's a chance that they will play. Sometimes you find her and you just hear the sound of, like, fluttering birds and no video plays. Other times, a video does play. So it's kind of random whether it actually will play or not. However, if the video does not play on the girl in the woods, then she will show up somewhere else in the woods. So if you keep looking for her, you will find her, even if it takes like five times, and sometimes it did take like five times for me, even if you have to find her five times. If you do it, you will eventually get a fragment from her. That's one way. Another way is when you're in that endless hallway, there's a, some, some random, well, not random, but some percent chance of getting reality fragment when you go through one of the doors in the endless hallway. It seems to be a pretty small chance, though. So, yeah, you can get reality fragments. And what I had heard was that those influence what happens. And uh, they do. In the first playthrough, when I first tried to play through the game, I did not know they even existed. Didn't bother with them. In my second playthrough, the one leading up to the last episode where I finished the game, I attempted to get the reality fragments to see... Uh, see if I could make the game change because of it, see if I could get enough to make it change, and I was unfortunately unsuccessful. However, I have, off-camera, played through the game again, and gotten enough reality, fra reality fragments to make a difference, as you will very, very much see in just a minute. Trust me, you will notice the difference immediately. Something's changed. Something very big and looming over the house has changed. You will see. And I'm pretty sure that's going to give me a different ending. I don't know yet because I have not actually tried to end the game. Because I'm kind of scared of the game's save system. I'm worried that if I finish the game, it won't... I'm worried that when I finish the game and I press continue again, it's going to take me basically to the end. Rather than right before the end. So that's why I've saved actually ending the game on this playthrough. For just now. So I can't guarantee this will be a different ending. But I'm pretty sure it will be. And even if it isn't a different ending, you'll at least see something new. Because as I said, something has changed. So that's one of the things I'm going to be doing in this video, in just a minute, is exploring what is probably going to be an alternative ending. Which I'm at right now. I'm at the end. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I am. Okay, that's the first thing I'm going to do. The second thing I'm going to do in this video is, because I was unsatisfied with uh, with my understanding of the story, I, I went around the Steam forums looking for other people's interpretations of it and found a lot. Not surprisingly, there's a lot of interesting discussion out there about the story, as it is a very open-ended story. So after the game ends, that is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some people's interpretations of the story and give my own thoughts. So that'll be the second part of the video. And that's about it. Are you ready to see what's different? Are you ready? It's very different. You'll see. Okay, continue. Have you noticed it yet? No, no. It's not there yet. You'll notice it in a second, trust me. Right about... right about now? Right where... where's it gonna happen? Oh! Hi! Uh, yeah... Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you notice, um, I... Well, let me talk about her first. Yes, if you collect enough reality fragments, the girl that you find in the woods replaces the monster looming over your home. I have to say, she's very creepy looking, although I don't know whether she's intended to be dangerous. I mean, the monster is obviously supposed to be dangerous. Her? I don't know. She's creepy looking, but she... But she also seems to be dancing. So... I don't know. But yeah, that is a girl you find in the woods, except now she's over your home. And that happens when you collect enough reality fragments. Okay. Yeah, I, uh... Frankly, I did a really damn good job going through the game. It was, uh... 
It was tough. It took me probably like three hours to get to this point. And I did really good. I don't think I ever... No, I, I don't think I ever had to restart a level except maybe once. You know, when it comes to getting hurt by the guests to the point where it restarts the level. I think that only happened maybe once, so I did a lot better than last time. However, somehow I've managed to end up with basically the same amount of time left. Basically none. So anyway, let's go. Again, I think turning the clock this time will do it. So even if the time runs out, I don't think it matters. Probably. Hopefully. I really hope it doesn't matter. It'd be funny if it is actually isn't the end and I can't get to the end because I ran out of time. <laughs> oh, that'd be so funny. No, no it wouldn't. It'd be horrible. And I would not replay the game to get here again. God, she's creepy. Okay, let's see if this works. There you have it. And now the credits will roll. So yes, my last ending was called Pagerian, and that's where I boarded, I barricaded myself in the home, and that was it. In this case, I, I guess, opened the front door, unbarricaded it or whatever, walked outside, found her, and apparently left this place forever. As you saw, the vines or the trees or whatever were creeping over it, taking it, uh, reclaiming it. And that was it. Breaking the circle. So even though I thought my last ending was a good ending, just because I didn't die or anything like that, I don't think it actually was, because he was locking himself inside of the home. It seems like his fears took over. And that was it. He was lost forever. And in this case, it seems like he uh, he broke out of, well, breaking the circle. He broke out of, I don't know, the, the fear or something. And he left his home. Well, I'll just leave, it, leave the credits going. As I already know, there's nothing in the woods. At least I don't think so. I walked around for a while and found nothing. So yes, this one actually seems like a good ending. And it's interesting that the, uh, the girl was waiting for him outside, and she seemed nice. Un unlike, the, unlike her looming over the house, which looked very creepy, she actually seemed nice. So I, I don't know what she's supposed to be. Exactly. Is she trying to hurt you? I I don't know. I mean, she's creepily standing in the woods when you find her, and then she's creepily, like, 500 feet tall and looming over your home, but then at the end, she seems like she is just nice and doesn't want to claw your eyes out or anything. So, yeah. I don't know what to make of that exactly, but it's definitely a better ending than what I got last time. Okay. Are you ready for some interpretations? Grab a cup of tea, like I have? Mmm. Wonderful and warm. Have a seat, and let's do this. Although I suppose you don't have to actually have a seat. You could stand up and watch this video, I suppose. Or something. If you want to be a rebel and be different, you could do that. That's okay. You'd be kind of weird if you did, though. Okay. Well, I have a bunch here from the Steam forums. This is not at all an exhaustive list of all the interpretations. I would have taken probably hours to read. So I'm just going to read some of them. Some of the particularly interesting ones that I managed to find. So again, all these come from the Steam forums. And I'm going to give credit where credit is due for these thoughts. They're not mine. I will make clear what thoughts are mine. So here's an interpretation from Little Boy Blue. I'm thinking the little girl is definitely the child from the numbered diary pages, and you were also the fella. You probably ran away with her to the house, although it looks like an apartment complex from the outside in the ending. In the woods, and she may or may not have run away or disappeared at some point, and you were thus driven mad by her disappearance and your own guilt, especially by the constant searching in the foreboding forest. Also, definitely a scientist type of some sort. 
Could you have been involved in the experiments and kidnappings, perhaps? Do the asylum-like ghosts slash guests possibly represent the oppressed townfolk or past victims of experiments? Although, since they also seem to represent horrible thoughts, you want to forget. Could it be your past? Your father, the tall one with the wheel leg, and your grandfather, the shambling ghost with chains and chains and uh, hunchback, who also went mad like you? The house itself definitely represents your own mind, so perhaps the setting we see isn't actually real in any way. What does the monster represent, though? The constant threat of someone invading your home and snatching away your little girl? You definitely want to keep forgetting something, which does sound like the little girl as you mention you remember a child living and you remember losing something in your nightmares. Perhaps the monster is repression, self-hate, and guilt and despair? All right, so that's the end of that interpretation. So it does seem like you've lost something. Uh, the diary... I I wish I could bring up the diary pages like right now, but I can't. So I'm just going off of memory here for the, from the one time that I read them. But the diary makes it sound like you lost your... It was your son, wasn't it? Doesn't the diary writer mention that they lost their son? They were taken away by the program? And the diary also mentioned that other kids were being, like, shuffled around and put in different people's homes uh, to hide, to hide from the program. So, here's a thought I had. Maybe you lost your son. It's a, this is assuming you are the person who wrote the diary. Maybe you lost your son, and at some point, one of the kids that was staying with you to hide was that girl, and maybe you bonded with her. And maybe that's why she's here. Maybe that's why you keep seeing her. You bonded with her. She's like, uh... She's like, uh... Sort of taken the place of the child you've lost. Or something. Alright. Um, also, yeah, you do seem to be a scientist. A worldologist, as he calls himself. Whatever that means. I don't know if that's a real term or if it's just made up. I think he said he's someone who watches and collects information. Like, he just watches. He just collects. Maybe he was involved in the experiments that were what sounded like done on the children. It sounds like experiments were being done on the children, right? So maybe, since you're a scientist, maybe you were involved in the experiments. Somehow. You live in a home that certainly s contains a lot of scientific equipment. Some of it looks downright creepy. Some of it looks kind of as if it's meant to chain people down and, like, almost torture-like, you know? Yeah, some of the stuff in his apartment, or the lodge, the house, whatever it is, is downright creepy. And other stuff is just normal, like, you know, a telescope in the observatory, that's normal. But some of it definitely looks like torture basement experimentation stuff, so he could be involved in the experiments somehow, maybe. Alright, so when it comes to the monster... Or, maybe I shouldn't even assume it's a monster. I'll just say creature. When it comes to the creature that's looming over your home... My first interpretation of that... Is based on the diary pages. The diary mentioned that... The program was kind of like a looming threat. That at any time could come to your home and just snatch away your children. So, that's what I assumed the monster was. The monster was the program coming to take away your children. And that's why it has a timer. Because it's... Like, eventually it's going to happen. Eventually you're going to run out of time. And it'll all be over. So that's how I took that. Hold on, I'm just reading my notes here a little bit more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, so that's the end of that one. And my thoughts on it. Um, this is another interpretation that comes from LTK. From the diary pages, it seems that the writer has had his own children taken away by the program, and his sanity has clearly suffered as a result. There is one room with a stool and a barrel knot rope swung over a beam, which indicates he was thinking of hanging himself. Maybe he eventually did? I don't know what the isolation of the lodger to the writer... Uh, Wait, what, sorry. I don't know what the relation of the lodger to the writer of the diary is. They are clearly different people. The writer lives in a town or city and has, or had, a family. 
The description of the program evokes oppressive Soviet practices, but the lodger is a scientist, lives in the middle of the woods, in the house that he has lived in since his birth, as his father before him and his grandfather. All right, so this was interesting because before reading this, I hadn't even considered that the writer of the diary and the lodger might be different people. From what we know, it, do, it does look like the, uh, from what the writer said in the diary, it sounds like the writer was, lived in a town. Which is very different from the lodger who lives in the woods and from what he has said, sounds like he's lived there his entire life. So that makes them sound like they're different people. But if they're different people, why does he have the diary? Now there's a couple of things I can think of here. Maybe the town written about in the diary is reality, and the woods and the house where the game takes place are just in his mind. So maybe they're not different people. Or maybe they are. And here's an interesting thought. Maybe they are, and maybe you were one of the kids hiding in the writer's home, and somehow you ended up with the diary. For whatever reason. Maybe you were one of the kids. Alright, here's another uh, interpretation. This one comes from Malik86. Hmm, for some reason, my theory is a lot simpler. The Lodger is just a guy who has lived all his life in a forest, and as a result of depression slash loneliness, is starting to see things that aren't there. The little girl represents nature, as in the woods he lives in. If he meets her, he sees a piece of reality, which means he understands that something he thought was a monster or whatever actually resulted from a completely normal situation. Animals making noises, uh, trees in the wind, etc. So, if you find these proofs of nature enough times, the lodger finally understands that he was being delusional and there's nothing dangerous outside. If he doesn't find them, he eventually believes the monsters are truly real. Throughout the whole game, he seems to be swaying between believing in them and not. Goes crazy and locks himself in. As for the diary, it might either be a fictional story written when he was a kid, someone living in a forest with his family alone, likely with no friends, might end up writing something as messed up and disturbing as that, or perhaps not even exist at all. The lodger is clearly kind of out there. Notice he says that there are no trees near his house, but clearly there are when you go outside, so he's probably not the most reliable narrator anyway. So he might be imagining these pages too. I suppose this is kind of a boring theory compared to others, but I kind of like this theory because it would be a bit more easily relatable to myself when I was a kid. I also sometimes happen to think something was wrong and got and get uneasy until I discovered the source of my worries was something perfectly rational. Alright, that's the end of it. This simple theory is actually by far the most concrete that I've seen. It fits in, it fits in nicely with a few things. One is that when you find enough of the reality fragments, that is, the videos that play when you find her in the woods, and when you're in the endless hallway sometimes, it will switch the monster to her, as you saw. She'll be the one looming over the house. That would explain the switch, right? Before he thought what was outside was a monster, but now that he understands more, now that he's found the reality fragments, now he realizes it's not a monster. It also fits in with the endings. When it was still the monster above the home, which was my ending when I first finished the game, my ending was the one where the lodger barricades himself in, protecting himself from the imagined horrors. Whereas once you find enough reality fragments and the monster or the creature switches to her, the ending is breaking the circle, where you seem to come out of your home, leave it behind, and it seems to be a lot happier. So, even though it's very simple, and straightforward, that theory, that interpretation makes the most sense out of any that I've read. It's, it's the most concrete. I think it's the one that fits the most uh, nicely into everything that I've seen. So I thought that one was particularly interesting. Makes me wonder if maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe it's that simple. Maybe that's all there is to it. Oh, and here's one little one. That's that's the end of the main interpretations, but here's an interesting thought that uh, someone called Driven in the Hi-Fi. Uh, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing these names. I'm terrible with names, so if I butcher it, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is just uh, one little thought that that person had, and I found it particularly interesting. 
This person mentioned the possibility that the door knocks you hear all the time are soldiers coming for the children, uh, coming for the children. So all those door knocks you hear all the time, all those banging and all of that? They mentioned the possibility that maybe those are soldiers looking for the children, coming to take them away. I just like that because it adds a whole new layer of creepy to all of those noises. Alright, so that is the end of all of the interpretation on... Inter oh my god, I can't talk. All of the interpretations and thoughts that I've collected. There are a bunch more, as I said before. A ton more, but I'm not going to read them all. It would take forever. I think that offers a pretty good kind of range of things. Everything from the complex and the strange to the very simple. Which one do I like the most? Well... I like the simple one the most because it fits the most it, it fits nicely into everything that I saw. At the same time, it seems so simple that I'm kind of worried it's just well, too simple. But still, that's the one that fits the most based on everything that I've seen. As for what as for what the game is actually about, as for what actually has happened, in truth, I have no idea. I don't think anyone but the developers of the story, uh, developers of the game, probably know. So, I don't know. But, those are some interesting thoughts. Hopefully they were... Hopefully they, uh, gave you something to think about. Whoa. What is this? Um, what? August 8th, Friday. Is this a puncture? Brian Connors? August 8th, Friday. Puncture. What? Is that from the symbol? What What made that pop up? What the heck was that? What? I, has anyone experienced that before? What, what's triggering that? Is that the symbol? Is it because I'm in front of the symbol, or, or what? What? I... I am intrigued. What is happening? Okay, so when I go back, it'll trigger again. What? Okay, what if I go in front of this one? Is it related to the symbols? Oh, whoa, whoa. One was about to pop up. Okay, I'm having a hard time reading this. Spy Spirus... What does that say? July 31st, Thursday... I'm not sure what that says. Do I have to be directly in front of the symbol? No. Three. What? Did did I miss this last time I finished the game, or does this only show up when certain things happen? Maybe I just missed it. Nothing for this one? What about this one? Lucky one. Edwin Chong or something like that? Oh my god, this is adding a whole new layer of creepy. What is this? Are these graves? Like, are these trees planted on the graves of... I don't know. The children taken away to the program? What? That's the only thing I can think of. I can't think of any possible interpretation for what this is other than something very creepy. July 15th, Tuesday. Welcome. What? Matthew, Welk. what? Okay, I don't remember seeing anyone talking about this on the forum, so... Like, have I discovered something really strange, or is this just something normal? That everyone knows about and it's not significant. I'm gonna have to dig some more. Hold on, let's look at a couple more. I don't even know what that name says. Stop. July 13th, Sunday. Stop. What? Give. James Patterson. Precisely. What 
I don't know what these words mean. It would be funny is if this is like a Kickstarter backer thing, because this game was Kickstarted. Quiet. Could these be just like the names of Kickstarter backers at a certain tier? They got their name put into these symbols? Or is it actually related to the game? I, I don't know. No freaking clue, but it's creepy. Sense. This is very, very strange. All right, I'm gonna look at one more. Other name. Huh, okay. All right. What What the heck was I saying before? I don't even remember. It was a creepy discovery. It's funny that it's kind of ironic that I discovered that right before I was going to finish playing this game for probably the last time ever. <laughs> I'm glad I found it. I seriously don't even remember what I was saying. Oh, yes. I was saying I hope this gave you some interesting things to think about, as far as the story goes. It certainly did for me, reading those interpretations. It gave me a lot to think about that I had not realized at all. Okay, well. I think that about wraps it up. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you're, uh, Hopefully your quest for the meaning of this game is not as endless as this forest. I don't know. There's no concrete interpretations. But there are a lot of interesting ideas that fit. Just none that I can, you know, like, put a stamp on and say, yes, this is the one. So, hopefully you feel satisfied with the story. I feel moderately satisfied. It's more of a... It's, it's really a taste thing more than anything else. Like, it's not a criticism of the story. It's just... When it comes to the stories I like, I tend to like ones that have a kind of concrete interpretation. One Stories with a lot of interpretations... I don't know. They just never feel satisfying. Even if they're interesting, which this one certainly is. Even if they're interesting. It really is interesting because it gives you... It really allows you to um, exercise your brain and kind of become a part of your st uh, kind of become a part of the story because there's so many interpretations that whatever interpretation you come up with is going to be in part a reflection of yourself. Whereas if it's an ironclad story, you know your interpretation doesn't really matter because it's relatively simple. You know A, B, and C happened, and then X ended it or whatever. There isn't really a part of you in that story directly because you didn't come up with it. Because it's ironclad, it's concrete. So I see pluses and minuses with both concrete stories and with ones that are more open to interpretation like this. And I tend to favor ones that are kind of somewhere more in between. I like there to be enough of a strong thread going through the game that there's something you can latch onto and say, yes, this, this, and that happened. But then I also like it when like that thread, that concrete thread is surrounded by things that you could easily have different interpretations for. So overall, I feel like this is... It's moderately satisfying. It isn't, it's not quite as concrete as I personally like it, but... I think that interpretation about... about the girl representing uh, nature and you're trying to... when you discover the fragments, you're realizing that your fears are unfounded. I think that one fits the, bo the most, so I think that's the one I'm going with. Alright, I guess I think I was going to end it like five minutes ago, but somehow I've managed to keep talking. This time, I'm actually going to end it. So, I hope everyone has enjoyed my playthrough of Knock Knock. Who's there? <laughs>